morning, everybody. We will call the commission meeting to order. First item is the consent items. We have the minutes and the treasurer's report. If there are no adjustments to either one of those, I would ask for a motion to approve both. Motion been made seconded. 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 Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, the next item is to receive and file the um, ABDO Financial HR Process Evaluation Report. I'm sure everybody has um, gone through that. Uh, any um, comments, questions? If not, I'd ask for a motion to receive and file that. Sure. How are you? Al? Yes. Jim had a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. <clears throat> well, Dave could just briefly tell us how he thinks we're going to be able to go forward with these recommendations and, and some of the data that's included in the report. Commissioner Willis, we have been working with Abdo Financial Solutions for multiple months now. So through the process, they have given us the recommendation report. We had a meeting with key leadership of staff last week to discuss that. And then they are going to be partnering with us both on the financial and HRN to help us set up some of the structure and go through the recommendations that they are mentioning in the report. And then it will be up to us to set up the structure and the staffing to handle that going forward. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm, I appreciate the fact you've got that report and you shared it with us. So, but that's well, the only question I had, Mr. Chair. Any other questions? Not. Uh, I think there was a motion on the floor to receive. Was there a second? I hear a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Action items. We have uh, a new uh, member with us. Dave, you want to comment? Chair, I'd be happy to. City of Crystal has appointed Kim Terrace as the interim representative to fill the board and commission seats. Kim is right across there waving. Thank you for joining us. Worked with the City of Crystal since 2004 as the Assistant <coughs> City Manager and Human Resources Manager. Prior to that, you see many stops in many other cities. Serving as the interim city manager as the city goes through its process to name a new city manager, which could wrap up this month is what we're hearing. So, Kim, very excited to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Next item is a presentation of the investment report. Mark Miller with North Oaks Investment Services. Mark is right there. Mark, Good morning. Floor is yours. Um, so I, I believe included in your packet there's uh, a portfolio <coughs> proposal listing the current assets. Um, as you're probably well aware, we've had quite a eventful year in the market. Uh, just to give you some perspective, um, year to date, the S&P 500 is negative 15 percent, although last month it was positive 11 and a quarter percent, so it has turned very quickly. And in actuality, in a midterm election year, the average um, uh, market drawdown by election day is negative 15.75, and that's been the average since 1950. Um, and then the following 12 months, the average recovery is a plus 19 percent. So we're, we're pretty much in line with, with history. Uh, but that being said, the portfolio um, here is, is not in the stock market. Um, so, uh, um, and right now, the market value of the portfolio shows 2,034,138, okay? And however, um, the, the balance reflected on, on the account always shows the current value of holdings that um, haven't matured yet. So as we go through, um, one of the biggest holdings that was added this year was the Blue, Blue Rock Total Income Plus Real Estate Fund. And um, that one, the current market value is just shy of 455,000. That holding was added earlier this spring. Um, you know, and that is actually a positive return uh, for the year of plus 5.82%. Um, and actually, it, it, as of uh, January 1st, of course, it, uh, the funds were not in this uh, fund back then, but this fund is actually uh, a positive double digits year to date. Um, so so that, that fund has been doing very well. 
Um, the next holding shows a U.S. Treasury note that has been in the portfolio uh, for some time, and um, a great example because it shows that there's 150,000, but the market value today is 148 because it's not matured yet. However, the maturity date of, of this holding is uh, um, July 31st of, of 23, and so then that's that's when the par value will, will be restored. Um, and then the 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 next. Um, section at the bottom there shows four holdings and these are what's called structured CDs so um, it, you can see where it's under shares there's 250,000 uh, of each of, of four different uh, holdings and these um, are um, th or three of them are five-year and, and and one of them is a four-year so these are a hundred percent principal guaranteed FDIC insured uh, structured CDs but a little bit different than a typical CD because they are in invested and and in such a way that you'll be able to participate in the upside of 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 the uh, um, of, of the fund, but you have full protection of the downside. So uh, so again, you know the market value of these four holdings shows eight hundred fifty-five thousand. However, the principal, which is guaranteed, is is one million. Um, so, um, but again, they have because they're not matured yet, they have to price. Uh, these holdings based on the market value today if you were to cash in early okay um, and, and then uh, the next page um, there's uh, there's still about two hundred twenty seven thousand dollars of liquid cash of which a hundred thousand is earmarked for uh, another investment that will be um, added later this <coughs> month and then um, the balance will be uh, able to be uh, put into a money market fund which one benefit of the, the Fed raising rates is that uh, now the money market rates have jumped to about 3.7%, so we're gonna be able to take advantage of that this month for, for the idle cash. And then uh, the last three holdings on the sheet are new bank CDs that have been added. And, um, uh, well, actually two of them are new. The, the first one says Bio Bank. Uh, it's a six month CD that was just added um, uh, this month and that matures in May, and that is a rate of 4.15%. We chose, you know, through speaking with Wendy and Dave to, to uh, 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 buy short-term CDs because we're in a rising interest rate environment, so we do expect the rates to continue to climb, so we just wanted to have some short-term money. Um, and actually, six months at 4% was pretty attractive. Um, and then the Goldman Sachs, that's a CD that you have held for a while. That one is coming due August 22nd of 2023. Again, another example, it shows the shares of 150,000, but the current value shows 148 because it's not matured yet. Uh, because if you cash in a, a CD early, you'll have to pay a penalty. Um, but that one will mature and, and restore that balance plus interest. And then the last one, Mid Midwest Bank, Oklahoma City, that's a new CD that was just purchased. That's a three month CD. So that's coming due in February, February 2nd. And, and that one is a 3.4% three-month uh, CD. So overall, even though the market value on, on your report shows 234, um, actually, as of yesterday, it, it shows, um, a, a, uh, let's see here, where are we? Um, the, it, it, yeah, the, your report shows um, yeah, 2,034,000. 2, as of yesterday, actually, the market value jumped to 2,048,000. But the actual guaranteed value of the portfolio is two million one eighty nine six fifteen. Okay, so um, we did um, earlier in the year because uh, the Fed was raising rates. We we exited out of a lot of bond holdings that had been held for a while, and um, many of you know that bonds w work um, like a teeter totter. When when the Fed raises the rates, the bond prices go down. So we were able to fortunately liquidate those bonds before they, they deteriorated anymore. And so now I feel very, very good that we've locked in some good principal guaranteed investments and, um, and, and with the real estate fund that has uh, never had a negative year since 2013, that fund is well positioned to benefit from rising rates and inflationary environment. So, so I feel great about the portfolio and I wanna thank you and it's been an honor to, to serve you um, and, and working with Dave and Wendy and um, so with that, I'll open up to any questions. <clears throat> any questions for Mr. Miller? Looks like everybody's very satisfied. Okay. And if I, 
In our business, of course, we have to be cautious about inside information, but I do have one inside information. I just want to say happy birthday, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Mr. Miller, thank you. Next item is uh, <clears throat> item uh, six, uh, the uh, 2023 uh, budgets. Dave, you want to make any comments on that? Just a very quick comment, Chair. This was moved to the executive committee after the September meeting. The executive committee reviewed the information and moved it back to the board, gave their approval. There has been one adjustment that we made as we sweep through the budget one last time between that meeting and that is on the projections page, which is in the middle of your packet, a positive change about $400,000 worth that as we were looking at the actual from 2021, the number was a past number, so we moved that number up. So the actual invested funds and funds currently in our balance as of the end of 2021 was $5,616,000. And so that correction was made. And again, we will be working very closely with the Abdo Financial Solutions on the structure. One of the recommendations is how to work this project projections page. So we're very excited to move this ahead and have something new to show you as we move into the next budget season. <clears throat> Anyone have any questions regarding this item? If not, need a motion to approve the 2023 budget. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next item is the election of officers to the um, executive committee. Any comments that Dave or Mike want to make or not? There is a document in your packet that outlines what was discussed at the executive committee meetings again <coughs> after the September meeting. And we have been looking at the bylaws and you'll see the bylaws mentioned additional times within this packet as it's something that has not been reviewed for some time and needs some reviewing. But one of the things that is in the bylaws is there's to be an election each November to elect officers to this body and also to the CCX media board, which we'll do later on during this meeting. So the exec executive committee discussed that and gave some recommendations of who is currently on and members that voice interest for some of the positions for the executive committee moving forward. Questions from anyone? If not, I ask for a motion to approve as presented. certainly can. So from the executive committee meeting, those that showed interest were Chair Al Madsen, Vice Chair Bill Blonigan, Treasurer Riley Grams, Secretary Kimberly Sandberg, and fifth member of the executive committee, Jim Willis. Chair, just yes. one quick correction. So my last name is misspelled here. I just wanted to note that for the record. Just Thank you. Our apologies. No problem. Any other questions? And you're looking for a motion yes. for the slate of officers. Correct. To approve so the slate of officers. Second. <clears throat> motion has been made and seconded for the election of officers. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And Chair, the second part of that memo discusses the bylaws and the structure of committees. And if you look at the second page of that document, there currently is a negotiating committee and the executive committee discussed that situation and the need for that negotiating committee because in fact, the negotiating committee basically mirrors the executive committee. And there is always the option for others on the commission that are interested in attending those meetings to attend those meetings during a negotiating period or during any of the executive committee meetings. So staff is recommending after discussion with the executive committee to discontinue the negotiating subcommittee. It's something that certainly the chair could set up at any point, but again, it seemed rather redundant at this point based on the discussion with the commissioners at the executive committee. Any questions regarding that item? I'd like to have a motion to uh, accept the discontinuance of the negotiating subcommittee. So moved. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. 
Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed carried. Legal legislation update. Mr. Bradley. Good morning, members. My report is really very short this, this week. Um, the, our legal report is in the packet, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. But um, I, I would just say that, that since the report was written, there was a report that came out on um, cable advertising revenues. And um, for those of you have, that have seen my presentations, when we're, we're talking about um, the health of the cable industry and, and those types of things for, for the provision of cable services, um, <clears throat> one of the benchmarks that I've always used is cable advertising revenue. And so this report came out showing that cable advertising revenue was actually decreasing, which is not a, a good sign um, for the health of the cable service part of the, of the business. Broadband, of course, is going gangbusters. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give you that heads up. It kind of goes along with that overall discussion that we've been having um, over time about, um, you know, how do we best look forward to the future for uh, the funding of this organization. Um, and when we see those types of trends, that's concerning. So um, the two benchmarks that I've used, by the way, are um, cable advertising revenue and live sports. So when you start seeing a lot of live sports going to streaming and you start seeing advertising revenue go down, that's uh, a reason to be a little bit concerned about, um, you know, where franchise fees are, are going to be going in the future. So that's my report. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Mr. Bradley, sure. yeah. um, why do we think it's going down? Is it that companies and organizations are taking their advertising dollars somewhere else? Or is there something else going on? Yeah, I don't know all the reasons why. Um, I, I would suspect that some of those advertising revenues are going towards the stream, streaming services, a lot of which are supported by advertising revenue now. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Mike? Thank you, Mike. Next item is a review and update of the bylaws. <coughs> Dave, comment? Chair, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of attention on the bylaws in this meeting and the next meeting as well and something that we're looking forward to work on over the coming <coughs> months. The commission bylaws were last amended and updated in, believe it or not, 1994. So it has been a little <laughs> bit of time. And again, with the election process that we looked at and see what that status was and also other bylaws that need to be worked on, we are looking at the opportunity to review those moving ahead and what staff is recommending is that the commission refers the bylaws to the joint commission and CCX media executive committees for review and updating and the goal is to have the updated bylaws return to the commission in mid 2023 for final approval questions if not I need a motion to uh, Refer the bylaws to the Joint Commission and Media Executive Committees. So moved. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. And there's a second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Recognition of uh, Commissioner Phil Leith, who I believe, Mark, you said he's got COVID? His wife has COVID. Oh, well, Beth does. Oh. Say so, okay. Dave? Chair, he definitely wanted to attend. I did talk with him yesterday, and he's very sorry that he can't be here. And this board and commission meant a lot to him. And as you see in the notes, Phil decided not to run for re-election this fall. His plans to devote more time to his growing business efforts after sitting on the council since January of 2007, so quite a bit of service to the city of Maple Grove. <coughs> he had served with us for 14 years. At his end of the service of council, he's also decided to end his service with the commission. And Phil's final meeting was today's meeting, so again, we're sorry that he's not with us, but again, been a great asset to us. We thank him for his service and certainly wish him the best we do have a card that we passed around through staff signed for him and so I will make sure I get that to him but you see Phil's picture there on the screen and we again thank Phil for his service with the commission 
Okay, we have some commissioners who some have some anniversaries to recognize. We definitely do, and this is something we do at each November to recognize commissioners for their years of service and five-year increments, and we have three that we'd like to recognize this year. We do have some plaques, so as I read your name, please come up and be recognized. Five years of service on the Cable Commission is Daryl Sanis from City of Brooklyn Center. Fifteen years serving as a commissioner representing the city of New Hope is Andy Hoff. I'll come to you, Andy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and the final walk will be a short walk because <laughs> it is our chair, Al Madsen who has, believe it or not, served on the commission for 25 years and again been a guiding light to our work here. And so, Al, thank you very much. <laughs> Find another spot on the mantle for another trophy, <laughs> right, Al? Yep. Thank yep. you for your service. And we'll do the same as we get to the board meeting as well. We have some five-year marks to recognize there. Communications, Dave. Just a quick update here and echoes a little bit of what our attorney had to say as well, that changes in the industry. So we included a couple documents that talk about the creators and how they're looking at disseminating information and how they're looking to different sources to get that information out, whether it be linear, whether it be pay TV, or whether it be streaming. And again, a lot of the movement happening towards streaming. Second article talks a little bit about local news and uh, emphasis and a look at how really what's important about the local news is that it is about their neighbors. It's about their local community. And this rung true to us because our interest all along has been to be as hyper local as possible and tell stories about the community, stories that you wouldn't hear otherwise. So again, that focus on the hyper local is something that's being noted as small newspapers and other communities go away, there is a need and people do want to hear about their neighbors in the local community and that's what we're providing. Final note is just a pie chart for you that again echoes what Mike Bradley was saying related to the breakdown of where people are getting their content and the growth of streaming. And you see on the chart that the streaming actually is 37%, so is larger than the other pieces of the pie at this point. We'll note that some of the broadcast and cable streaming is in that 10.7% that's on the top of other streaming. So while Xfinity does obviously have a lot going over the air, they do have a lot going through streaming, and so that's where they're counted within that picture as well. But just to keep an eye on some of the changing numbers there and what is happening in the industry, the other quick note, not in your package, but on your table, you will note that today is Give to the Max Day, as I'm sure you're probably well aware. And our technical crew is very high tech, and they have the <laughs> QR codes in front of you. So if you want to use this yourself or take this back to your place of employment or wherever you go today and have people take a look at this, going on that code will take you right to the CCX media page on Give to the Max. We're doing some things related to social media and also on our email system to let people know that there is the opportunity to support the local work that CCX Media does through Give to the Max. Thank you, Dave. Anything else anybody have for the commission meeting? Bill. Well, I do. I just, I, um, I just want to thank all the three members that were recognized today, um, Daryl Sanis, Andy Hoff, and Al Madsen and um, one or more of them. I know that uh, uh, one or more of them may be going off the commission soon. I want to thank you for your um, service. The, um, I noticed at the next meeting, which I'm not a part of because I'm not on the CCX Media Board of Directors, um, that Al Madsen and Daryl Santos have 25 years and five years on, those, on that board. So uh, 25 years, Al, on each of the boards, it's almost like you served 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> so way to go. And, um, I know that um, George Selman did not run for re-election in Robbinsdale, so 
uh, in all probability, he, he won't be on um, this board next year. He may, depending on whether he wants to and whether the new council wants him to. That's at the discretion of the new council. <laughs> yes. Mostly. So in case you're not, uh, I just want to thank George for his service here. He's uh, been here uh, consistently and um, repetitively and loyally, and he's done a good job, and he's represented Robinsdale well in this commission. Thank you. I second that. <laughs> Anything else to come before the commission? If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I would like to move that we adjourn. <laughs> second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. The um, next item is uh, the board of directors. We have a situation where we do not have a chair or a vice chair and so before we can actually call the board to order uh, we'll need somebody that is interested in becoming one of those positions um, mr. Schultz my understanding is that you are interested in the chair position I'd be willing to serve in that capacity Anybody else have any aspirations to be the chair of the board of directors? Hard-fought race, it sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> we need to have a, pro, a chair pro tem appointed, and then we can then we can vote on the permanent chair after that. So. Um, I guess I would suggest that we, that the board um, make a motion that Al be the chairman pro tem, and then he'll preside over this meeting, and then we'll elect the officers after that for the, okay. the board. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Then made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. You get a little extra work for the morning, Al. <laughs> these high-paying jobs <coughs> okay um, approval of the minutes of the September 15 2022 meeting and the treasurer's report I would ask again if there are no adjustments to either one of those um, one motion to take, take care of both of them they are asking just to do the call to order oh I'm sorry all right we'll call the board of directors to order now the consent items. Any uh, adjustments to either the secretary's report or the or the treasurer's report? Motion to approve. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Now, election of officers to the executive committee. Dave, do you want to? Yes, Chair, I can one? give a quick update here. You have it in your packet as well. And again, looking at the bylaws, that there is to be an election of officers for the board each November. This has not happened for a number of years, so we discussed this at the executive committee meetings in September. All in attendance agreed that it would be the time to have an election here at this meeting. The bylaws also state that the chairperson, vice chair, and three other directors <coughs> shall be members of the executive committee of the board. And currently, the CCX executive committee members are, as you see, two retirements of city managers. The other members are Mark Scholes and two vacant seats. So that gives you an update of where we are currently with the board of directors executive committee. Following the meeting we discussed at September 15th on the executive committee joint meeting we asked if there was some interest of people at that meeting in serving and Al Madsen Mark Scholes and Riley Grams all indicated that they would be interested in serving on the board executive committee if the board so chose mr. Bradley how do you want to proceed well, we know we have one person that is interested in being chair. Is there anyone else that is interested <clears throat> in being chair? Landslide. We have okay. Riley and you are interested in being on the board. We need a we need a vice chair. So anybody interested in being the vice chair of the board of directors? Oh. 
Então foi. All right, so no one's interested in being advised here. And then we need, to, uh, I think, two other people. I'll throw my name in there as vice chair then. Yeah. So we can move along. Yeah. And the vice chair just simply serves as the basically the chair's backup <laughs> for, for running the meetings. Um, and we just need two other people to be willing to serve on the board. The bylaws state three. three. We have Riley. Three two okay. others besides Riley. Very good. So we need two more. Everybody's jumping up. I'll volunteer to serve on the board. Okay, Daryl. One more. There's momentum now. There we go. There we are. Okay. Excellent. All right. Set it down. So the slate would be Mark Scholes as chair, Al Madsen as vice chair, Riley Grams, Daryl Sanis, and Giannina as the representatives on the executive committee. Any further <coughs> questions, comments regarding that? If not, um, entertain a motion to accept. <coughs> so nobody, wants, nobody wants to. <laughs> I'll second. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And chair, similar to the last meeting, there are a few committees that are standing or are committees that have been set up and have been on the books but not meeting. That would be the Budget Committee and the Policies and Activities Committee. You see on the second page who is currently on those different groups. We discussed this at the Executive Committee meeting on September 15th. And after that discussion, staff is recommending that the board discontinue the Budget and Policies and Activities subcommittees until they might be needed in the future. Discussion on that item? If not, ask for a motion to accept the recommendation. So moved. Motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Next item is the uh, Budgets, Dave, any further comments? Chair, similar information to what was discussed in the commission meeting. It was reviewed at the executive committee meeting in September. <coughs> they move it back to the board and commission for approval today with that one change that we noted earlier. So we look for the board's approval on the budget. Comments, questions, budget, 2023. If not, ask for a motion to accept. Moved. Motion's Second. been made. Seconded. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, Dave, a resolution accepting donations to CCX Media. Yes, Chair, something we're very excited to do on a occasional basis, and we have the opportunity here in resolution 2022-06, accepting four individual donations to CCX Media. We're received in October of 2022. We will get thank you letters out to those who have donated. You see the information on the second page. We did a little looking into where these came from because very unsolicited, and it is a group that is involved with real estate equities, a property development company that has some holdings in the northwest suburban area and we have done some cities in the past and I believe they appreciate the local coverage. So they have made these following donations and we are looking for a motion to accept those. So moved. Motion been made and seconded. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, again, Dave, review and update of CCX media bylaws. Similar story to what you heard earlier at the commission meeting. We again are looking through some of the documents from the organization after the change of leadership. And one thing that we've noted is the bylaws for the board have not been updated since 2003. So again, a number of items here that we think it is prudent to look at. And what we're recommending is this be moved to the joint commission and Board Executive Committee for review and updating. 
We will need a motion to refer it. Motion's, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion on this item? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Anniversary recognition of staff members, oh, excuse me, board members. Yes, Chair, we're pleased to acknowledge again the two that have served. They were mentioned earlier and we'll mention them again because they have done a lot for our organization in five-year increments. We recognize members who have served and this is included on their plaque. So it states both the commission and the board. Daryl Sanis again from the City of Brooklyn Center, five years, thank you very much. And Al Madsen representing Maple Grove, 25 years. Thank you again for your service to the CCX Media Board as well. Recognition of staff members. Thank you, Chair. The document uh, attachment number seven states those that have reached five-year marks. And again, something we do at the end of each year to recognize staff members who have been with us for some time. And again, you will see that many have been with us for a number of years. And you see after each name the type of work that they do with us a lot in the five-year category with our sports and events crew that are out with the trucks on a regular basis covering the high school sporting events and community parades. David Weld, a city council director, those all five years. Javi Cedillo is our create coordinator. He is running camera right next to me here and I'm gonna sneak over. We'll test our camera people to see if they can follow me. <laughs> We do have a plaque for Javi, recognizing his 10 years of service with CCX Media. I'll set it right next to his camera as he works away there. Two for 15 years of service, Jason Malello is a sports and news reporter. You might have seen him out in the community at your cities or at some of the high school games. And Sam Mueller also serves on our sports and events crew and again has been with us for 15 years working on a part-time basis. We have three in the 20-year category. Jamie Anderson is our technical services manager. He is actually in the control room working one of the pieces of equipment. And we'll hold it for you here, Jamie, since you're tied in there. But we have a nice plaque here for Jamie for recognition of his service for 20 years with CCX Media. We thank him. We have two others in the 20-year area. That is Dustin Scholl, a news photographer, and Andrea Widmark. She is a city council director that some of you probably know, working behind the scenes at some of your meetings. Two final staff people reaching quite the benchmarks here. 25 years of service is Chris O'Connor. He is our new city services manager, has worked in many capacities for us throughout the years, and now is working with all of the city council meeting coverage. He's running camera here and I'm gonna make my way over to Chris. Great reasons to get up this early in the morning. And last but not least certainly is Tamisha Ture. She has been with us for 35 years. She is our creative services coordinator, has worked in this part of the building for many years in CREATE, but now is overseeing some of our work of doing for hire work for different organizations and that whole next leg of having other income come in. So, Tamisha, I think you might be able to join us out here. We're going to have to get you on camera. Sure. All the cameras are rolling. <laughs> Behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> Staff reports, Dave. And others. Yes. The first report is from CCX News. Shannon is here with us this morning. Welcome, Shannon. Good a morning. Little recap of a busy time of the year for the news department. It has been busy. I feel like every time I'm before you just about, I'm talking about the election, and today is no different. We just finished a very big effort um, 
getting ready for the election and, and executing election night. Uh, we facilitate candidate statements, as I know I've told you about before. We had 85 candidates come through out of a possible 107. Of those who did not come through, most were running unopposed, or it was the really big, higher profile races like county attorney, county sheriff, Omar. Um, Dean Phillips race, although Dean Phillips did come in and his people told me beforehand, we've got to move through quick. You've just got to have him through quick if he comes in. And I said, challenge accepted. So from the time he walked through the door, recorded his statement and got out, he was in and out in under four minutes. So I was really <laughs> proud of that. And his people were too. He was a one take wonder there. So um, we got our candidate statements up. On election night, we did something just a little bit different. We know people want two things on election night. They want the numbers, they want to hear from the candidates. So instead of putting all of our manpower into manning and putting on a live production on our channel, we tried to get people out in the field. On our channel, we showed live results coming from the Secretary of State's um, Information Center, their, their website. And that might sound simple because it just looked like screens that were changing with numbers, but that actually was a pretty complicated process that required weeks of preparation, weeks of test, and of course, a few days before we were all gonna go live on election night, there was a problem with all of the state representative results coming through from the Secretary of State's office, so we had to get the bugs worked out there. So it was very simple, but there was a lot of work leading up to that. And then we had crews out in the field interviewing candidates, and we were getting those up on the website and on social media as soon as we can. So we were in people's homes, we were at the American Legion, we were in restaurants trying to interview winning candidates. And so that went pretty well, I thought. And I think it was a long night. I think Dave and I turned off the lights on the building around 2 a.m. <laughs> so, but we got it all done and we got it all out. And of course, if I'm before you, I always like to ask for story ideas. And I just wanted to tell you guys kind of an interesting coincidence here. I had Emily tell me, we've got this great guy in Plymouth that's run 299 marathons. I was like, that's a really cool story to tell, right? So we tell the story, and then I find out it is Daryl Sanis' brother-in-law. So it is a very, very small CCX world. So, of course, we always welcome story ideas, send them our way. And that is all I have. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Shannon. Next is John Jacobson. A lot happening. We do have a question. Sure. I just want to, I want to say thanks to Shannon and the entire staff for everything you did to facilitate understanding of local elections and the candidates that were aspiring to city offices. It's a very valuable service and I just want to express my appreciation for the work that you do and all those who are fostering better participation in the governmental processes. Thank you. I, I second that. I second so that. It's, it's a heck of a job. <coughs> Great job. <coughs> John Jacobson right. is right. here. We got him up bright and early. He is going to give us a little update on what has been happening with sports and events coverage. John? All right. Thank you very much. Well, in our uh, front lobby on the other side of the building, you'll see our Hall of Fame members. We started a Hall of Fame for former high school athletes and coaches back in 2004. We inducted four new members this fall. You'll see their plaques uh, coming up soon. Uh, Danny Cameronisi was from Plymouth, two-time Olympic medalist in, in women's hockey, won a gold in 2018. She came in for an interview shortly after that. I got to hold her gold medal. It's like one of the coolest things ever. Won a silver medal this past year. So she came in. Nia Coffey, who played basketball at Hopkins and then was an All-Big Ten player at Northwestern, now is in the WNBA. Uh, Rodney Williams, who's a basketball player at Cooper High School, um, three-year starter for the University of Minnesota, played professionally briefly. And then Sarah Burnham, who was a golfer, <coughs> excuse me, at Wyzetta High School and two-time Big Ten Player of the Year at Michigan State, who is now a women's golf coach at Oakland University in suburban Detroit. So four worthy candidates for a Hall of Fame. It was great to catch up with them this summer, and again, you'll see their plaques um, up on our, on our wall here soon. Uh, this is kind of a transition time between fall sports and winter sports coverage. Our last high school football telecast will be tonight. Maple Grove playing Lakeville South. Uh, it's the state semifinals in Class 6A. The winner goes to the Prep Bowl in two weeks, and the Prep Bowl is covered exclusively by Channel 45. Um, we also have state swimming this weekend. We'll have somebody shooting highlights of that, state girls swimming and diving, and the state-adapted floor hockey tournament at Stillwater High School. We'll have someone covering that. And then we've started with Windsor Sports. Our first girls hockey telecast was Tuesday night, 
And then our big event coming up next weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, is the 20th uh, Turkey Trot Boys Hockey Tournament. We have been the title sponsor for that event since it started in 2002 at Plymouth Ice Center. Uh, Waizetta High School is the host for that. The first four teams in that tournament 20 years ago were Waizetta, Buffalo, Burnsville, and Park Center, which doesn't even have boys hockey, unfortunately, anymore. They're part of the Osseo program. And this year, it's Waizetta, Maple Grove, Edina, and Moorhead. So we're excited for that. We'll have four games live uh, the day after Thanksgiving, that Friday and that Saturday. Always well attended at Plymouth Ice Center, and, and a lot of people watch it on our, our coverage as well. Uh, that's all we have. We're, we're keeping busy again, transitioning from fall to winter, but had a lot of fun covering some great high school athletes and teams again this fall. Thank you, John. Question? Any questions okay. for John? All right, thank you. Thank you. We're going to, we do have a question. <laughs> no, I was just, Comment. as we thank Shannon, I just want to thank John and Jay and all of their other uh, staff people their coverage of high school sports events is fantastic. I mean, it is excellent. And I've even had some high school football coaches tell me that they love to be the CCX game because they'll actually use the CCX footage to do their uh, you know, film study afterwards because it's so much better than their own. So I just I want to thank you, all of thank you, you, for all of your work. It's I will pass on one quick note too. I talked to a volleyball coach before the season started at uh, Champlain Park, John Yunker, and he told me he had a he was helping at a at a volleyball youth volleyball camp in Wisconsin this summer, and he had a girl from Ohio come up to him and said, "Hey, you from Minnesota? So, yeah, you're the coach at Champlain Park." I'm like, yeah, how did you know that? CCX YouTube is my like favorite channel to watch, and this girl said, I don't know how old she was, a youth player, she started playing volleyball from watching Champlain Park High School Volleyball on our channel. So I thought, well, that was, that's a pretty good reach and says a lot about, not about me as an announcer, but our coverage and our crew people that do a great job in, in covering those games. So, so our coverage is, is well known. So that's good. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Next update showing his multi-talents is Javi Cedillo. Hopping off the camera there, coming to the microphone to give us an update of some of the things that you see in your packet and also the election that is underway here at CCX Create. Javi? That's, that's correct. So I just wanted to mention uh, the first thing um, on our report is networking night. So that was, uh, that was fun. That was successful. We had somewhere around like 20 members and we kind of sat here and networked. We had some food and we connected talking about what the future looks like here at CCS Creates involving our members. Uh, this, the, the, uh, sorry, the discussion went from the kitchen to over here where I was able to showcase all the new equipment we've been collecting throughout the year. Um, and we also spoke about <coughs> the TriCaster, which is really nice and is being utilized at the moment. Um, and going from the TriCaster, I just wanted to mention too about the member spotlight, that's Kevin Vandenberg. Uh, he's one of the new members that's been here for the for somewhere around the last few last year i guess and uh, he's the one that introduced me to the tricaster before we even had it here in the studio he kind of bought his own so he kind of showed me how to use it um which was very nice of him to give up his time um uh, from his busy schedule and show me how to use a tricaster it kind of it's all network plugins and just it, it's it's kind of the like I said last time it was like the Lamborghini of, of all switchers so kind of very happy about that and uh, also um, going to the side of the report I got the orchestra um, Jimmy Morris one of our members was able to provide um, video production to this uh, organization where people are still stuck at home especially people who are living in um, and uh, what are they called? Uh, senior livings. So they can't go out the house. So he provided this through Zoom for them. And uh, there was somewhere around like 100 maybe plus viewers kind of watching the orchestra play at the center. Um, and people were very grateful for that. Uh, also, kind of jumping around, uh, we also got new brand new swag. It was designed by Trudy and I. Um, you could see our model at the very bottom. That's Colin Branch, or our intern. So he's kind of showcasing what we've got, which is brand new shirts and totes. Um, 
so with that i also wanted to mention about the board uh, election going on at the moment uh, it, it ends next tuesday on the 22nd so right now we have uh two two of our members ilona um and kevin so we're very happy we're very happy that they're running and i wish them both uh, best of luck so thank you thank you javi any you questions much. about create and the last page, I'll just touch on some things happening in general with CCX Media. And the first three items relate to what we've talked about a few times today and creative services, the opportunity for us to use some of our talents in our facilities, this room and other rooms in the building, to work on a for hire basis. Currently, we're working with Osseo on a downtown marketing video project. And you might recognize the face in the first picture there. Mark was one of those businesses in downtown Osseo that we have been gathering footage from and by the end of the year doing some editing. These are again promotional videos that will be used by the businesses themselves and this is a Hennepin County grant that is coming through the city of Osseo. Next is three creative services projects in one with one client and again we're very thankful to have Anoka Hennepin Schools coming back to us on a regular basis. Towards the beginning of the year they worked with us on three different projects. A convocation address they did virtually this year as well a suicide prevention video and also school discipline videos so that white area if you've been into the studio on the opposite side where we have the big white wall has become a favorite spot for clients to come in and do their work and that is also the same area that we did all of the candidate profiles for the election coverage also worked with SEEP a great community organization food shelf in the area that celebrated their 50th anniversary so we are very pleased that they came to us and said we would love to have you partner with us to create the video for that event. So staff has been working with them and the event went very well in the past couple months and they continue to use that video. It was made in such a way that it obviously could be used for that 50th anniversary but also something that could be used on an ongoing basis to tell people about the great history and work that that organization does. And the final note this was mentioned earlier the candidate forum coverage again our crews were very busy and again want to say a thank you to Chris O'Connor who worked with those crews at the tail end of that process and making sure that our coverage was right there for all of the cities we partner with the League of Women Voters and cover those candidate forums and again they go to those specific pages so people can go in by city and say who are my candidates and then click on is there a candidate forum and listen to an entire forum that was covered by our crew. So again, hats off to Chris and the rest of the crew for going out and covering those. We also, by the way, did a few on four higher basis for the North Metro Mayors Association. So again, another opportunity for outside organizations to use our services to get information out to the local communities. And one other note, again, I just wanted to mention give to the max, so that information is there. If you wanna take those cards with you, we'd be happy for your support and support of others. Anything else to come before the board? Any questions of Dave? Just a reminder, executive committee will take place following this meeting over, I assume, in a conference room by your office? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions? If not, we entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. We are adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to you. <laughs>